How you guys doing? This is the part of uh, Mechanical Mile. This is the uh, exec, I guess you could say, uh, what would you call it? Exec container, I guess, pretty much. This is uh, this is it. Before we get to this, I'll get to this. That's what it starts with. And uh, before we continue, I want to give these two people here credit. Uh, Pink uh, 1081 on American Tarantula Society, ATS. I kind of saw his uh, instructions on the uh, Mechanical Mom. What he does, which you'll see here in a minute, is he presses on the middle. You, you'll understand what I'm talking about here in a minute. In the middle, and it cracks the inner layer, and then you just hit it with a, hand, with a uh, screwdriver. Pretty good idea. Worked great. Exodex, I hope that's right. Joe, everybody knows who he is. It's not like I have to even. <laughs> you know, uh, he, he was kind enough to, I uh, was wondering how the stack actually turned around in the Mechanical Mom, and he posted pictures of the Velcro strips, which is why they're on here. Uh, really appreciate it. So, I just want to give people credit if, you know, I don't, you know. It's not my idea that I'm not going to take credit for it, but I have a lot of, this whole machine is off people's ideas, my idea, it's a bunch of people's, it's just everybody's thing. <laughs> it's not effort. like it, this isn't a new thing, I didn't design this or anything, this has been out since, I don't know, 60s, 70s, who knows. Uh, but this is the canister, yeah, basically, you go to, I would go to Walmart or any art craft store, uh, and what these containers do, they're stackable containers, and they're awesome. They actually probably work with slings. Put it on one lid. Basically, how these work, you unscrew. As you see, there's a bottom to this. There's a top to this, right? Now, there's not a top to this. The top to this is actually the bottom of this. <laughs> did I, did I, did I uh, confuse anybody yet? But you can't fit an egg sack <laughs> here. Basically, this turns. Egg sack can't be in a space this big. So, what you do, that lid stays on. Take this one. You take that lid off. The, the inside. The inside out, this goes together, and then you have this whole chamber. Yes. Like this. Too thick. Basically like this. See this? Side. So basically all I did was take there's a, the inner lip out. The Velcro. It goes all the way in now. Yeah, it goes all the way in now. It's two layer thick instead of one. Yep. The Velcro is so when the stacks here, it spins like, like a washer and dryer. It just it picks just, it up it a little bit. Kind of it all, so thank, it thank you, Joe, for posting that too. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll put this together for now. But what you do? Easy. This is, I'm not gonna do all of them. I don't have time on video, evidently. I don't. You you can do it with this on. I do. I take this off. Set this aside. And hold it up so there's a little bit of space. I take what they call a uh, hole punch. This is basically made for a drill. When you want to hit it, you want to. You don't want your drill walking around. It works for this too. Don't use a hammer. I did that and it just exploded. <laughs> So, what I do is put this on plexiglass, it should make a pie hole. That did not sound right, but that's okay. You know what I'm talking about when I get nasty here. Okay. See how it's splintering? See it's starting to splinter? Mm -hmm. What you do is you do it again on the other side. It don't matter where the cracks are. Okay, it's cracked, right? Then uh, you take your screwdriver on the edge. Like so, on all the edges. This is walking a lot worse. Put, turn it upside down, actually, when you're doing this part. I forgot about that. Right on the edge. See how it's turning white? You do this all the way around. It'll fall out, trust me. I, t I actually use the tongs. I don't like the hammers. Yeah, much better with the tongs. You know, when you do it on video, it never works as good. <laughs> I did this last night, like there's nothing. Just go around all the edges, you know, right around the edge. It's just basically you're making a crease so it gives. Basically, the bottom of this is thinner than the top, than the sides. Just go around the edge, just like this. Almost done. I use tongs for many reasons, for many things. Pinching my wife when she sleeps, I mean... Yes, and I appreciate that every time. Do you? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna tell him where I pinch you at. Okay. On the toe, I promise. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, basically just go all the way around. Like this. See I went all the way around hitting it. Then what I'll do is go around and just go like this. Because it's already it's already cracked, so it just gives. And you'll be left with that. See how it's all raggedy? <laughs> this is why now I'm going to look like an idiot. You ready? <laughs> uh, safety glasses are a must. It's no joke. I had a piece. Uh, you asked my wife the other day. I had a disc from a Dremel tool. 
stick in the plexiglass right in my in the glasses. That's how hard it hit. It was 30,000 RPMs. I was cutting something. And then I read on the stretches, it's only supposed to do 15,000, but I don't think that. But. Then you take this sander on Dremel tool. I don't use cords, I use cordless. Best Dremel tool you ever get. But this, uh, just sand this down. Be careful not to hit yourself with this. I know it's, I'm just saying it. Just if some new never use one of these. They can, I mean, torque. I just do it so like this. Halfway. Did that hit me? Try to only get. I've used these for years. I'm not saying bragging. I'm pretty good with the Dremel tool. You know, not hard. A lot easier than using a knife. Move the edge out. Your stack's gonna be in here. You don't want any sharp edges. For sure. That didn't sound right either, did it? <laughs> it's a little hot, it'll melt. Just leave it, because when it's cool, it'll come right off. Can they hear me? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I can. I'm gonna assume they can. Well, you get the idea. Go in there until it's really... See these these boogers, whatever you want to call them? Yes, plexi plastic boogers. Yeah, I get it a lot cleaner. I'm just doing this for the video. I'm doing it kind of quick because it's time limit. But that's all basically what you do. Now, the piece you had before, remember the top? You screw that together. Now you look. You know, mm -hmm. a very... Too deep. Oh, there's a little nipple there you need to shave down to in the middle. They, all plastic has that. I, I'm, I'm very cautious about <laughs> I'm not going to say where I put my sacks because that doesn't sound right either. But, uh, uh, then you got your lid like this. God, these things confuse me sometimes. There you go. There's, there's one chamber right there. Okay, as you see, same thing. I did that twice, basically. See here? Mm -hmm. I did that twice. And that's two chambers. Now you're probably wondering what this chamber is for on the bottom. It has nothing in it. You know, it's just this. This is where, this is depends on your design of your machine. You can have it like this where it glues here and it's and glues here, the shaft glues here from the timer that spins it. I'm having one that you drill through here and you, and you bolt it. So you don't want a bolt rubbing in where your sack is. You want to have this in a separate chamber. So this basically, this chamber is for the bolt to ride in. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't ride anything. Or it doesn't snag or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, that's it. Now the next step would be to put your Velcro strips, like, you know, it's uneven. Velcro. It's a soft part of the Velcro. Soft, soft part of the Velcro. And it's, it's industrial grade. It's softer, actually. But it holds better, but we're not using it for that. Now, after that, I haven't even done that on this one. I'm going to show you. Uh, you basically, you have two chambers. What I do is just take this off. Take the bottom part off that you're not going to need for anything. These are chamber, chamber one, chamber two. Separate them in the middle. Sometimes these will stick. There's, a, there's, all right. The top, the bottom of this is actually the top of this one. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do on the chambers, you don't ever want those coming apart because when you know you don't ever want. What, what you're going to do? be two. Yeah. So you're going to yeah. glue. Take, take this apart. This is epoxy glue for plastic, Loctite. What you do is you put this on a piece of sur a surface, mix it together, put it just on a. You don't need much on the thread of this. Screw it back together. Screw it together, okay? And screw it together. It's like he had it. You do that because the reason, the reasoning behind this is, what am I doing here? Wow. It's clear. It's hard to see. Oh yeah, it's for it's my. You know, I could take these ignorant things. <laughs> I probably see a little bit. I, I'm very, there. We go. Okay. Anyway. That's your chain. The reason you want these, because like, say you have this in the machine and it's spinning and you want to take, you know, I don't know, say you want to take this sack out. If you twist this, you don't want it to come apart here because that's where your sack, sack is. Your sack falls you want down. it to only be able to come apart here. So when you twist it, it just comes apart here. And you boom, get your sack out, put that, you know, whatever. What's cool about this, you have one, two sacks in here and this one's done, whatever. <laughs> Pull that one off. Take your sack out of that chamber, which will be connected. This part will be connected to the machine. Just take the lid off of this one. If it has hands with this, and then you put it on here, and then you have that part on the, you know, mm -hmm. that, that part would be on the, 
because we're expensive. But that that's uh, another thing I did is what you this and that's a must. This is probably the most important thing. I almost forgot it. <laughs> is the ventilation holes. They had you know, I did holes every one and a half inches all the way around on each chamber. And yes, I even ventilated this one. <laughs> it just didn't look right, not ventilated. <laughs> so I had to do it. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> That, that's basically the, the, the device. I mean, you can add, depending on how strong your timer or whatever's turning, your gearbox or whatever that, you you can make it, you know, make this thing hold three or four maybe, even not too much more than that. But this, that's the tutorial on uh, where the XX go, the XX chamber, I guess you could say. That's about it on that. I mean, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. $2.50. I don't think it would be beat. All right, guys. See ya. How you guys doing? This is going to be a mechanical mount tutorial. Uh, I'm at my dad's place, so it'll be my place, so it's surroundings should be a little different, but uh, yeah, me, my dad are doing this project together. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. Uh, this, is the, this is the box. Basically, I put this here. This is just a temporary temperature gauge. It's nothing fancy. It's a flukers. It's probably not accurate. I want to just to have it. I'm not saying you have to, then you can skip that stuff if you like. Uh, right here is a panel that I made, had this, I made for the box. This is where everything gets bolted to. This is the humidifier right here. By the way, I want to give credit to Talon AWD, Steve. He's the one who gave me the link to this humidifier, so thanks, Steve. All it is, is this. I mean, honestly, you fill it up with the water. Here's the fill line, the green line. You fill it up with the water. This goes in. You screw it on. You see the air stone? Okay. This goes here. That's where I want. I could put. You could put this in the tank, but I'd rather not. This is an air hose. This is an air pump. Air pump will be mounted here. Nothing's mounted yet. I'm just doing this for tutorial. You have two lines coming out in the one. It goes up to here. Okay. That's where your air goes into. The, it bubbles the water and creates humidity. And then you have a hose going from here, and you drill a hole here. And it'll come down very neatly down here, not all <laughs> loosely. Uh, I don't know where this. There's a there's a bar spray bar. It's a hard piece of plastic with holes in it, and it releases humidity in the tank. That's the humidifier. That's where the humidifier will go, and the air pump. Now this is the most important thing, and this has took me a long time to find this. Uh, this is about 150 bucks. It's expensive. This is a commercial grade construction timer. Uh, I'll put the model number in the post. This is uh, it's really hard to find a timer that turns more. See, basically, this turns 24 hours in one time. If it did, it'd spin a sack one time in 24 hours. I believe uh, female tarantulas do it more, so this is a four hour timer. So this spins one revolution in four hours. So you uh, multiply that by so this basically will spin the egg sack chamber six times in 24 hours. And basically, you have a rod. There you go. Get this straight. This is a template. This hole is the center of this. This is what your rod is going to connect to. Yeah, right in the center. Yeah, you basically have a rod that connects to this. That okay. goes through the tank, but right there. That's where you're going to drill your hole. The rod is going to go through the tank onto the egg sac chamber, which in turn spins it. And underneath it, which I haven't, we haven't included today, we'll do that as another video, are pulleys with rollers, so the egg sac, the egg sac chamber can do that. Can, Roll on this. Mm -hmm. And Dad, how did you get center on this? Explain it. You went two. He went basically. Would you measure two? It's two and three eighths, eighths inch to the first hole, right? Top of the left to the center. And then you, and then you, the side to the center. Two and a half inch. And, and then you took the door off and made a template, right? Okay. So maybe that's a template of this. Because right. if you don't do that, you're not going to have center right, and you're, it's going to go to spin, and it's going to hit inside the tank, and it's going to be horrible. Yes. I'm not going to do a tutorial on the wiring, because if you don't know how to wire, you have no business wiring. If you don't know how to wire, get somebody that does, because you get electrocuted very easily. This is 120 volt. Now, Dad put this on, and the plug, he made the plug, and it goes in the wires. I'm not going to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. And that'll go here, route will go through, spin the exact chamber. Now you're probably wondering where it gets its power from. These aren't bolted in yet. This is going to be mounted right here. As you can see, he actually stayed in. Basically the power from that will be plugged in here. And on top of this, on top of this, has a wire going into one outlet. 
and that'll be here. That'll plug in your humidifier, your timer, and the most other the most important thing is the regulator. This is an awesome tool. I'm sure people own reptiles. You've seen this before. This is what they call a hydrotherm. This has to be modified. Well, it, it's up to you how neat you want yours. This is the temperature gauge. This is a real temperature gauge. The only thing that goes inside the tank is this probe. Don't get so close. Let's see. This measures humidity and temperature. So basically that'll be here. You have to, it'll go through the tank and be inside the tank where the egg sacs are, but right here. Here's what's so cool about it though. Two plugs. This is to your humidifier. Your humidifier plugs in here. When it reaches 80% or whatever you set it at, or whatever you set this at, 85, 90%, mm -hmm. if it reaches 85, 90%, it shuts it off automatically. It shuts it back on when it falls below. Same with the temperature. You set it at 85, when it gets to 86, shuts it off. It drops below 84, shuts it back on. This might be, uh, the only thing that has to be modified is this plug. Since, you know, mine's being mounted here, the probe's going in here. It's going to plug in here. You don't want all this. We're probably going to cut this off and put another plug on it. So it's just a little short. Yeah, I don't, I don't like wires hanging out and all that stuff. Another important part is going to be heat source. My room, I probably will not need a heat source, but we're probably going to put this about right here. This is for your light bulb. Light bulb will be plugged in here, you know, through a, like that. So basically it's going to sit in, you know, sit in a tank like this. That'll be your heat source. I'm doing that in case someone wants to loan this from me and they don't have a, a heated tea room they can use it. Next thing I love this. <laughs> this is a fan. Isn't that cool looking? That's like the coolest fan I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's aluminum billet. Not saying you have to go all out like this. I spent a lot of money on this. I, I just like stuff that's neat. Uh, I'm going to put this in the corner. The way we're going to mount it, it's not going to be bolted. It's going to actually put a piece of velcro on the bottom and put it here. Reason being, it's kind of like the way it is. I can just take the velcro off, put it wherever. I'm going to put it here. It'll circulate air in here. Remember, the humidifier spray bar will be here. From the humidifier, the hole's going in. It's, mm -hmm. got, a, it's got a spray bar. I don't know where it actually is. How many minutes we have to? Uh, 6.30. 6.30, yeah. I don't see the spray bar in there. That's all right. Not a big it's somewhere. Huh? It's somewhere. It's somewhere. We got a lot of parts. Too many parts. I wanted to show it to them, but... Mm, yeah, this video. is... Basically what it is, yeah. That's the mechanical model, I mean, honestly. A lot of wire, I don't like that. They do that so you can have it outside the tank, though. So, I mean, you can't blame them. Very good design, though. Yeah, now, boom. There's your probe. Upside down. <laughs> That's neat, though. That's the probe, and then you shut that off, and that'll plug in. That, that basically regulates everything. Right. And, uh, most important thing. What is the, how are you going to attach the rod to the timer? This is a piece off a rod holder that we found. My dad actually found this. And this right here will be both will you put your drill holes where this goes. And on the back you're gonna you're gonna put you're actually you're gonna put your screw through here and it's gonna bolt here. Now when you're doing this, the most important thing is if these gears are ruined at all, this thing's junk. Mm -hmm. I mean it's that on it's that simple. So we measured it and it's fine. And basically this will you know bolt you know bolt this to it. This will be threaded and the rod will thread to this. And then the rod will go to the egg sac chamber, plastic egg sac chamber, and it will turn it. Turn it. Yeah, let me get the egg sac chamber so they know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, guys, sorry about that. This is the egg sac chamber. The egg sac goes in here. See that? I have a video on that before. This one probably saw how to make that. So you'll have a rod threaded to here. It'll go to here. Like that. This will be on the other side of this. This piece will be connected to that. Have a rod going through. It'll sit like that and turn. There we go. And that'll be it, guys. All right. Have a good one.